Hey guys, so finally I got around making a video about this here. This is the latest version of the Nano Long Range and it does have a new feature now. Something that is oddly satisfying for some reason is that now you can just simply take one of these 18650 cells, complete standard cell and you can do this here. You can just pop it in and you have your quad working. Pretty neat, super cheap batteries available everywhere and you will be able to get something like 10 to 15 minutes out of a single one of these cheap 18650 cells as long as it, these are high quality ones like these Sony VTC6 cells. All right, so let's talk about flight performance a little bit. And as you would expect from something that is running on a single cell and has an all up weight, including the 42 gram cell of roughly 100 grams, well, it's not exactly overpowered, of course. So it is not meant to be used for freestyle or racing, although it can still do some flips and rolls. It's really meant for cruising and it does do that quite well. It does fly quite smoothly. Um, it's really a pleasure to cruise that thing around and you will be able to get a pretty decent range with the three to 400 milliwatt VTXs you can put on board here. So it's really sort of designed to do some mid-range cruising, maybe a kilometer out or one and a half kilometers out. But of course, since it's so tiny and light and uh, sort of underpowered, it's also not really meant to do actual long range uh, in the mountains and going really far out beyond one or two kilometers. But let's look at some actual DVR footage of this quad here. So I did actually test this in the mountains, 2000 meters above sea level, less than zero degrees Celsius outside temperature, pretty serious wind. Basically, worst case condition, and surprisingly, it's still able to fly quite properly. It's fun to bring along, doesn't take up much space in your backpack. The batteries especially are super small, uh, so really kind of a cool gadget to have and a fun build to do. And as you can see, it does handle, uh, does handle these rough conditions uh, still quite okay. Good clean video link, uh, pretty decent range, not too much wobbles because of the wind. But honestly, where it really has its strength is in um, just cruising around, like I'm doing it here, flying a bit of proximity, just some relaxed flying and cruising. This is what this thing is, is actually made for. Okay, so third thing I'd like to talk about is a bit the technical details of this quad. So basically, the basic drivetrain this thing has is really standard 1S toothpick equipment, like on this 1S toothpick here, for example. So these are 1202.5, 11,000 kV motors. These are from HGLRC. We'll try to get them in focus. So tiny 1202.5 motors here, three inch. Gemfam props, a all-in-one flight controller and uh, ESC. And that's about it. Really basic 1S drivetrain. The difference is, so the difference to one of these 1S toothpicks here is that we do have a separate 350 milliwatt VTX, which will allow us to get a decent range. And the other difference is that since we are running on these lithium ion cells here, we have to go down to 2.5 volt of um, cell voltage here to really use all the 3000 milliamp hours of capacity they have. On the lithium polymer, in contrast, we would only go down to 3.5 volts. So this is an issue since basically the 5 volt circuit on the flight controller isn't designed to go down to uh, 2.5 volt input. So it will tend to collapse. Um, at around 3 volts and your camera and or VTX will start to shut down. But the good news is it's actually quite easy to avoid that issue. So if we take up the take off the little cover here and look at the electronics that are inside of this, 
So we do have an extra component you would not typically find on any, um, any 1S toothpick and this is a step up here. So this will convert the input voltage of the battery to 5 volts. So what this does is basically feed the VTX, which is here, this is the video transmitter. So there is one of these step ups basically in the flight controller feeding um, the internal circuit, internal five volt circuit of the flight controller and the camera and the receiver here, the crossfire receiver, but it's not feeding the VTX. So the video transmitter is running off this separate step up here, which means that the amp draw on each of these two 5 volt circuits is quite low. And if you keep the amp draw low, so decouple the high amp draw VTX from the 5 volt circuit of the flight controller and feed it with this quite beefy 5 volt step up here, these 5 volt circuits here will be able to go lower than 3 volts. I push them up to 2.1 volts. Usually, depending a bit on the output power of your VTX, it does work uh, down to a bit less than 2.5 volts, so quite exactly what we need to really harness the entire capacity of the lithium ion packs. Another thing that is in here is this LC filter. So this is simply filtering the power supply that is coming from the 5 volt step up here because this tends to be quite noisy. There's a little extra LC filter and that's basically everything. Uh, we need to solve this low input voltage issue. Um, the wiring diagram is on Thingiverse, so you'll be able to look up how to exactly connect all of that stuff here to basically make it work with the lithium ion batteries. All right, so how could you build your own? Well, quite simply, if you have a 3D printer and you're sort of experienced with building FPV drones, all you need is on Thingiverse. You can download the files, the wiring diagram, and there are links to all the equipment you will need, all the parts and where to get them. I would not recommend this build to total newbies because well, honestly, if you look at this uh, here a bit closer up, these are very small components. It's super tiny and the soldering really isn't super easy. If you just look at the VTX here, these small soldering points here, the motor wires, this is all very, very tiny. And I think it might be a bit frustrating if you're really only starting off with the hobby and learning how to solder and put together these FPV quads. So if you don't want to build your own or just simply can't, I'm working on a version 2.0 of this and it will be based on this hybrid version here. So it will have carbon arms, will be released under the Reckon brand and it will be a frame kit, a BNF and probably even a full RTF kit with controllers and uh, goggles. It is at the moment in final prototype testing and I'm expecting it to go into batch production very soon, but I'll keep you guys updated on the latest developments of it here on YouTube and on my Instagram channel. So one last thing I'd like to clarify because this is a question I got quite often is whether this is a good FPV quad for a beginner. And again, I would say building it not really because it's a very it's a very small and tight build that might be frustrating for a total beginner unless you have some soldering and you know electronics building experience from another hobby but is it actually good to fly for a beginner here i would say well in principle yes because it's small it's safe it's not very powerful and it's therefore quite easy to control but the downside is maybe, especially the 3D printed version you are seeing here, um, well, it will not be very crash resistant, so you have to you have to take this into consideration. But on the other hand, since it's 3D printed, well, you'll be able to just print as many spares as you need for basically no cost at all, which is, for a beginner, quite an advantage because you will crash in any case. All right, so... For those who want to build one, I'll link the Thingiverse article in the video description. I'll also link all the parts you need. And if you're interested in just buying this ready to fly or a frame kit, I'll keep you guys updated on the progress that we're doing with um, HCLRC and Reckon FPV on the actual product development and the final version. Right guys, 
Hope you found this interesting and useful and don't forget to subscribe.